Hey listeners, you'll hear some very interesting music under the fight in this episode, and this song comes courtesy of none other than Toxic X Eternity. If you're not familiar, Toxic does a ton of really excellent metal video game covers, which can be found at youtube.com slash Toxic X Eternity. Thanks. Welcome to Extraordinary League, an actual play RPG podcast brought to you by Smash Fiction. I'm Dan Mulcairin, your Game Master. Playing Stitch is Kit Mulcairin. Um, Luna, Dante painted himself green, and I am concerned. <laughs> <laughs> Playing Dante is Liz Logan. Dante. My name is Dante. Can you say that? Yoshi. <laughs> no, 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 no. Dante. Yoshi. Yeah, sure, okay, my name is Yoshi. <laughs> <laughs> Playing Nico Minoru is Miles Schneiderman. I, uh, I saw a Nico cosplay at Phoenix Comic Fest this past weekend. <laughs> that's, that's what you got? Yeah, oh I, don't, I, don't, I don't think she expected to be recognized because she was really surprised. You sure it wasn't just, like, a goth a Japanese goth? girl? Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 she had the staff of one, that's how I recognized okay, her. Okay, all right. Had, like, oh, the, okay. like, the rest of the costume was kind of like unrecognizable but the staff was very clear that was a very good story miles <laughs> thank you i'm tired playing luna lovegood is megan bob dear quibble readers i've met more new creatures and learned more about magic here than the whole time we were in nexus city we opened these cubes that perform randomized magic spells especially to equip people for combat i can't properly describe the magic as i don't understand how it works that said please do not owl the quibbler to explain the arithmancy behind it <laughs> Lots of love, Luna. Playing Vivian is Claire Mulcairin. Do you guys ever wish you knew your character in real life? Like, I think Vivian and I could be really good friends. And, you know, as a fellow trans girl, it would be really good to trade makeup tips with her, especially because her makeup game's always on point. And I'd really like to know her secrets. I'd especially like to know what she does about 5 o'clock shadow. Oh. Uh, I thought you were going with an eyeshadow joke. <laughs> Previously, you teamed up with Princess Peach and her group, the One United People, in their struggle against the tyrant Bowser, his Koopa Troop, and his vast and inexplicable robotic hordes. Peach has promised you that if you can help the rebels free Mushroom Castle from Bowser's claws, she will reward you with her brooch, which just might be the blue gemstone you came to the Mushroom Kingdom to get in the first place. Your invasion of Mushroom Castle has been devastatingly effective. Bowser's robots have been shut down and his forces routed, so now all that remains is to ensure that the tyrant Koopa King is properly booted off of his ill-gotten throne. The scene opens on the rooftop of Mushroom Castle. Vivian and Nico have emerged from the smoking, flaming interior of the castle's highest tower, where they destroyed the antenna that Bowser used to direct his robotic forces. Flying in from the nearby battle are Dante... Mounted consensually on Yoshi. <laughs> Stitch, riding the Raptor Lace, who is sporting a very stylish yellow cape. A pair of Luna Lovegoods, both mounted on broomsticks. And Peach, atop her own flying Yoshi. Did you catch that dunk? I'm sorry, I wasn't looking. I apologize. <sighs> I think I heard it, though. <laughs> Stitch just throws his arms in the air and walks off. <laughs> Nico is right now just like completely like dismissive of anything that wasn't accomplished via rocket launcher. So <laughs> Vivian's like, I, I did a kind of cool explosion thing too with some fire. It never mind. It wasn't a big deal. <laughs> Wait, Nico, do you still have the rocket launcher with you? Oh no, no, it was a it was a spell went away. Uh, well, how hard would it be to get in? Or is there like a door? Peach, you know the castle really well. Is there? Do you? Where do you think Bowser would be? Just then. An earth-shaking roar breaks out from the castle's tallest tower. Silhouetted by flames, standing in the now-empty window frame that, just moments earlier, held a stained-glass tribute to his glory, is the King of the Koopas, the massive dinosaur turtle Bowser. His eyes gleam with a manic fury as he looks down at all of you. You fools think I need machines to conquer the Mushroom Kingdom? Ha! I have all I need right here, and it's more than enough to crush every last extra life out of you. And he then <laughs> leaps down from the window onto the roof where you're all standing with a teeth-rattling impact as he brandishes his claws and fangs. Let's roll initiative. 10. 11. 12. 9 for Vivian. 3. 
<laughs> Nico is busy painting uh, little rocket launchers on her nails. That's what she's doing. <laughs> and I need an initiative roll for Yoshi and for Peach from Liz and Claire. Uh, two. Two for Yoshi. So then that's a six for Peach. Do you guys need a reminder as to uh, which power-ups you still have? Oh, yes. Yeah, I'd kind of like to know how mine works a little bit better. So, Luna, any action that you take, your clone will also take with the same target. So if you cast a spell on a target, you will essentially cast that spell twice on the target. Uh, Does that mean that I would roll twice, or does that mean that whatever effect I get would be double? No, you roll twice. Okay. So Luna has her clone out. Vivian is still in her cat suit. Yeah. Dante has the hammer in his pocket. Uh, I thought he was I thought he was happy to see us. <laughs> <laughs> I will be. Nico has the superstar in her pocket. Goddamn right. And uh Lace still has her cape. Dante, you are up first. What would you like to do? Uh what does the hammer do? You lose the ability to do anything other than move, jump, and swing the hammer, but the hammer deals strength plus 30 damage. How's that any different from anything else I ever do? Obviously, I need to pull out the hammer, jump up, and hammer Bowser on the head, and like literally hammer him through the roof. Okay, let's uh, let's see how you do. Roll me a fighting check, please, Dante. As a very jaunty tune begins to play seemingly from nowhere. Yellow. So with this gigantic hammer pistoning up and down over Dante's head and in a devastating arc, you slam into (laughs) Bowser's head from above and deal 60 damage to the King of the Koopas. Dante, you knock him through the roof. Yes! Yeah, so you hit him and like the roof breaks from underneath him and he plummets down into the interior of the castle. Luna, it is your turn. So Bowser was just hit through the roof and is now glaring up at all of you from within the castle. What room is he in? What's the space that he's in below look like? Good question. Uh, I'm going to say Bowser is in the guest room. So he's uh, next to like a really big four poster bed. There's uh, like a chest of drawers and a table nearby. Kind of small, but quite fancy looking. (sighs) I've been debating whether or not I was going to do this, but I think I... I'm really sorry. I wouldn't normally do this. (laughs) Says both Lunas simultaneously. I know. <laughs> Legilimens. Oh. You want to uh, share what Legilimens does? It is the spell for mind reading. I have amazing mind reading whenever I do it. I don't know. Maybe we'll get something. Oh, 97. I'm pretty sure that's <laughs> red. You get to roll again because of your clone. I mean, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> no, what if she gets two different memories? <laughs> So, a red and a green. I hope one of those memories isn't Bowser masturbating furiously to Peach. (laughs) I know. One of them is a useful memory. The other is a childhood memory that is not useful, but is adorable. And Megan Bob, because you got a red, if you want to find out a particular piece of information, you can do so. So, like, what is it that you want to find in Bowser's head? And it can be as specific or as general as you want. So, you know, something that will help us, you can say that. Or if you want to specifically say, like, like what's Bowser's plan? Or, like, what does he have up his sleeve? You know, anything like that. God, I just want to know what his childhood was like. But don't don't tell me. That's not my <laughs> choice. That's just what I want. Well, okay. that's what Tumblr's for. It's fine. <laughs> I know. I'm looking to find out why he's doing this now. Like, what's making him change his tactics and what he's hoping to do? Because he used to, he was an antagonist this whole time, but now he's a different kind of antagonist. What's happened and what is he hoping to get out of it? What you learned from Bowser is that someone recently appeared in his castle that wasn't from this world and gave Bowser a lot of technology, which Bowser then used to conquer the Mushroom Kingdom. Bowser is worried, however, that this source of his is ultimately going to turn on him or potentially turn the robots that he had created on Bowser. So Bowser is partially fighting you guys right now as a means of proving to himself and to the world that he doesn't need robots and that it would be a bad idea for someone with a lot of robots to turn on him. Oh, wow. Can I see the person in his memory? You can. Uh, Bob, I'm going to send you a picture and you can <laughs> okay. you can describe it to uh, to everyone how you wish. <laughs> oh, so you can enjoy as I fumble towards describing <laughs> this person. That is correct. I cannot wait. Guys, all the tech, he didn't, it's not his technology. He got it from, okay, I'm going to try to describe this person to you. He is like an egg if <laughs> eggs could walk, but also had very weird hands <laughs> and a lot of mustache. It's this man, and he's 
upset with this man, but he's also scared. And he doesn't want the machines to turn on him, but he also, he's having an, a confidence crisis. <laughs> we can use this. He's really insecure. Stitch, it is your turn. So just staring up at Luna, listening very intently, nodding along. And then he looks at the hole and he peeks down through the hole and sees Bowser. And he looks at the Luna just like, I'm going to throw him once. <laughs> and he jumps the hole. <laughs> okay. Uh, what's Bowser? What's Bowser's sitch? He climbed to his feet after being knocked through the roof by Dante. Uh, so he's standing up. As you land in front of him, he leans over you with his uh, claws raised and smoke coming out of his mouth and nose. Aloha. <laughs> Stitch is going to attempt to grab Bowser's tail. All right. <laughs> oh, no. Stitch scampers around behind Bowser and makes a strength check. I will just leave it at a yellow. Uh, yeah, Stitch, you grab onto Bowser by his tail. You gonna throw him? As Luna made it sound like maybe we should try to try to talk to him. So Stitch is gonna throw him up out of the hole. Okay. So Stitch grabs Bowser. Actually, by the- no. Stitch is gonna throw him through another part of the ceiling back outside. Yeah, of course. <laughs> so Stitch grabs Bowser by the tail, sort of spins around a few times, and then does like a hammer throw of Bowser through a different part of the ceiling. Adieu. Sending Bowser sprawling across the rooftop and taking a bunch more damage in the process. Vivian, it is your turn. I, I don't think I'm really I'm really the, the, the heavy hitter here. I think I'm going to try and infatuate. I think I'm going to try to, like, I'm going to throw him off his rhythm. Vivian's just going to say, like, wow, I've never seen anyone who's able to stand back up after getting knocked through a ceiling and then thrown back up through a different part of that same ceiling. You're pretty, <laughs> you're pretty strong, aren't you? And I think Vivian's going to, like, kind of twirl a finger around the hair sort of thing. Aww. He must make a psyche check. If he gets a green, he is dazed. If he gets a white, he is charmed. Uh, He got a green. Bowser looks at you in confusion. You're not sure if it's your words and the feelings that it's stirring in him, or if he maybe has like a moderate concussion from all of the abuse he's been taking, (laughs) but uh, he's going to be uh, significantly less effective for the next round. Peach, it is your turn. So yeah, I think at this point, Peach is going to reach somewhere into the folds of her clothing, whatever, you know, pocket dimensions are in there, and pull out uh, a giant cartoon bomb and say, I've been waiting a long time to do this, and then chuck it at him. Uh, how does this one work? Is it just damage to an area? Uh, yeah, all enemies must make an agility check or take, it shows different amounts of damage based on how good of an agility check they make. Bowser got a white. Okay, he's taking 75. Nice. Ooh. A tremendous explosion goes off, leaving yet another hole in the benighted <laughs> roof of Mushroom Castle. <laughs> <laughs> Bowser is flung smoking into the air, and just as he reaches the apex of his ascent, there's suddenly a shape that flies seemingly out of <gasps> nowhere and catches him. Bowser is seated now in what appears to be a large clown head, open at the top, with a big propeller at the bottom. <laughs> he looks down at all of you and roars out, You think you can beat me with numbers? I'm far too strong for that. I'm far too strong to be beaten by anything. Uh, And with that, he reaches down somewhere into the depths of this bizarre vehicle he's in and produces a giant cannon, which is clearly of the same make and design of the other robotics he's been using. And uh, he's going to see what effect the cannon has. So Bowser raises up the cannon and fires it and nothing happens. (laughs) Bowser instead spends his turn hitting and yelling at the cannon. (laughs) Nico, it is your turn. All right, mean or funny? I really think he can be turned. I really think he can, Nico. (laughs) Both, Nico. (laughs) I'm going to point my staff at the gun and say backlash. Oh, no. (sighs) So whatever the gun would do... You know, hopefully not nothing, but whatever it would do, it's going to do in his face. All right, great. I am enjoying this a lot. Go ahead and roll your psyche. Uh, I believe that's a red. Let me make sure about that. Yes, yes it is. Uh, Let's see what the cannon does. Bowser keeps hitting this thing and is, like, looking down the barrel to see if there's an obstruction Ah. when you hit it with the spell, and the cannon fires full blast on him. Bowser gets hit in the face for 75 damage. It is Yoshi's turn. 
Yoshi's just going to fly around Bowser and be like distracting. And then maybe he's going to fly around, stick out his feet, and go feet first into the cannon to send him into a spin. Oh, cool. Yeah, I like that. I'm going to say that's a strength check. Yellow. Bowser is knocked out of his Koopa clown car. The clown car goes like spiraling off into the distance and lands somewhere out in the countryside. It gives a ridiculously huge explosion. (laughs) It it is like way bigger than it should have been. Bowser lands on the ground. I'm going to say he lands in the courtyard. So you guys are still on the roof, sort of like looking down at him. He stands up. He's like covered in soot and smoking. He tosses aside the now useless cannon and just looks up at all of you on the roof and roars. Dante, we are back up to you. You are still swinging the hammer. Well, I guess I have to go from the roof to the courtyard. I guess so. So you leap down, swinging the hammer over and over again, and I'm assuming you are aiming it at Bowser. Give me that fighting. (laughs) Red, I got a 98. All right, Bowser takes a very strong hit over the head once again from this hammer and reels in a daze from the impact. Luna, what would you like to do? I know about the Eggman. I, I saw him. He looks really mean. Bowser shakes his head, shaking off the daze that resulted from getting hit in the head by the hammer, and looks up at Luna, at the two Lunas who are saying this in stereo, (laughs) and he says, What Eggman? There is no Eggman. I created all these machines by myself. He didn't create them. It was me. You just said he didn't create them. And he looks up at you for a good, like, three seconds flat, and then says, No, I didn't. (laughs) <laughs> okay, but what if you didn't have to deal with him anymore? What are you saying? I'm saying what you seem like you really need to not be in this situation. It seems like it's not working out well for you, and I don't want to see you get hurt, because you're definitely going to get very hurt. All right, Luna, roll me a psyche check uh, with a bonus if you have persuasion. I got a green. Come on, be slightly okay with this Bowser. Bowser momentarily looks as though he might be considering it, but he needs to be further convinced. Guys, a hammer. he's softening! <laughs> no, Dante! Vivian, it is your turn. Vivian's gonna say, for the record, I'm, I'm open to the possibility of calling a truce and discussing things with you about a way to move forward peacefully, but just so you are aware, what, you, what may have been perceived as flirtation was a battle tactic that I was using to <laughs> deceive you. So there, there's not gonna be a thing with us, just so you know. Roll your psyche with a bonus for persuasion. It's a green. Bowser's resolve seems to weaken a little bit more. He's really thinking about this. It is Peach's turn. Look, if anyone can get through to him, it's Peach. Are you all right with me role playing her down? Totally. So I think she's going to say, Bowser, if there's a threat coming to this kingdom that is something we need to be prepared for, I want to know about it. And if you can help us prepare for that, then we can be lenient. You know how this goes. It always goes the same way. Okay, so give me a psyche check for Peach. She also got a green. So Bowser gets this look in his eye and sort of bites his lower lip with his fangs and says, Well, it's difficult for me to to say this, but sometimes I do feel as though I may have gotten in over my head on this. Dan? Yes? But before he finishes that sentence, can I take my turn? <gasps> sure. Oh! I say anvil drop! <laughs> oh, no! Uh, it's a yellow. Okay. So remorseful Bowser is suddenly hit on the head by a giant anvil that appears over his head. <laughs> I say, we don't know where that came from, but it certainly was not from anyone affiliated with us. <laughs> Are there little Nintendo birds flying around his head? Yes, absolutely. Little duck hunt ducks. <laughs> oh my God. As Bowser sits on the ground, reeling in semi-consciousness. Suddenly flying from over the walls comes a Koopa dressed in a blue hooded robe riding a broomstick. He looks down at Bowser on the ground and says, Your Majesty! Oh, these rebels have come in and invaded everything and ruined everything! Well, this will not stand. No, sir! And uh, with that, the Koopa on the broomstick draws out what is unmistakably a magic wand and points it at Bowser. There is a string of colorful geometric shapes that comes out of the jewel at the end of the magic wand. When they strike Bowser, Bowser suddenly seems to surge 
as he quintuples in size. His spikes become much larger and more prominent. He becomes visibly stronger and more powerful, and his eyes seem to blaze with magical energy. Bowser has been transformed into Giga Bowser. Stitch is just like... <sighs> <laughs> And also, Kamek, a.k.a. Magikoopa, has joined the fight. It is Yoshi's turn, Liz. I guess since I fly and, you know, the Harry Potter wannabe flies, I'll go for him. I want to I wanna somehow grab his broom. Okay. You want to, like, grab it with your tongue, maybe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. Yeah. Roll it. Oh, my God. I rolled another 98. Liz, you are on this amazing hot streak for the last, what? like, several episodes. The f- Fuck. Yoshi eats Magikoopa's broom out from under him. <laughs> oh and he my. goes plummeting down to the ground and takes a bunch of damage when he hits. It is now Giga Bowser's turn. Giga Bowser takes in a deep breath and lets loose a torrent of fire at those of you who are still on the roof, which I believe is Stitch, Vivian, Peach, and Nika. The four of you need to make agility checks. Uh, is lace included in that? Oh yeah, lace as well. Vivian has the ability to use Veil to- gra- I can grab an ally and bring them with me, and if I do, I sacrifice my next turn. Do I have to do that before they make their roll? Yes. Then I think Vivian is going to grab Peach, and um, they're go- and going to try to Veil them together. So in, in your case, Claire, you'll be rolling uh, Vivian's fighting. Okay, I'm going to spend some karma then. I rolled very poorly, so I spend 39 karma to get a green. <laughs> nice. Well, that's all you need when you're rolling on evasion. So yeah, Vivian manages to grab Peach and drag her down into the shadows, safely away from Bowser's flames. Uh, How did the other people do? Stitch and Lace and Nico. Stitch got a green, Lace got a white. Okay, and Nico? I got fucking red. Nice! Unbelievably. You dive out of the way, easily avoiding the flames. Stitch, you get hit by the flames and take 20 damage but I believe you ignore all of that yeah. because of your resistance to fire. I just stand there as it will fades me. Probably. <laughs> Lace is not so lucky and takes 40 damage. Oh no, she's out. All right, Lace drops. Uh, Lace no! gets burned. Her, her little cape burns up and sad music plays as she falls in slow motion. Camera looks at Stitch's horrified face that turns angry. <laughs> Kamek, the Magic Koopa, stands up on the ground where he fell, brushes himself off, and then glares up angrily at Yoshi and waves his wand again. This time, a trio of fireballs streak out, heading for Yoshi. Uh, Yoshi gets hit for 40 damage. And Dante, it is your turn. Well, I just saw Yoshi get nailed by some fireballs. I mean, you also saw several of your friends get nailed by Giga Bowser's fire breath, but Uh, I know where your priorities are at this very second. (laughs) Yeah, so do I still have the hammer? You sure do. I want to throw the hammer. Wow. A move that Carpenter Mario never thought of in Donkey Kong. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, You're going to be making an agility check for this one, Dante. Yep. And my rolls continue to be pretty damn good yellow. Yeah, so you just huck this hammer across the battlefield. Kamek sees it coming, puts up his wand, and, like, summons this force field, which your hammer completely obliterates. Yes! Uh, and his wand actually starts smoking from the overexertion. Uh, yes. So your hammer is gone, but so is his force field. Yes! Luna, you are up. What would you like to do? Asio wand. I want his wand. Very good. Make your psyche check twice. Green and, and a yellow. Comic's smoking wand is yanked from his hand and comes to a stop equidistant between the two Lunas. <laughs> uh, Stitch, what would you like to do? Stitch lifts up Lace and pulls her away from any remaining Inferno, and then, to the sounds of a church choir, he walks back through the flames all <laughs> There's like a couple of doves that fly by. <laughs> so yeah, as a slow motion walks out of the fire. You somehow got a leather jacket and sunglasses. Yeah, he's dressed like John Wick. It's really weird. <laughs> and then he fucking charges at uh, Giga Bowser. So that's Rayad. You strike with all the anger of a million Keanu Reeveses. <laughs> Giga Bowser soaks some of that damage because he has some impressive body armor now, but he definitely felt that. He was like visibly rattled by the impact. He's uh, looking down at you with great interest, by which I mean a severe amount of malice and anger. 
Uh, so Vivian, it is your turn, but you gave up your turn in order to uh, veil yeah. Peach to safety, which means it is now Peach's turn. Yeah, so Peach is going to pop out of the shadows and be a little upset about just using the bomb already. The, <laughs> yep. the one bomb that she had. I think we're going to float on over to Bowser and we're going to hit him with a frying pan. So she got a green and that does strength plus 20 damage and her strength is typical, so that's 26. Okay. Well, yeah, she hits him and like the pan is slightly bent when she brings it back. <laughs> Giga Bowser takes six damage. Jeez. Well, we're getting there. Nico, what would you like to do? I'm going to point my staff at Stitch. Yes! Make me John Wick. <laughs> Make me literal John Wick. Yes! <laughs> I mean, you could do John Wick or you could do the, th- or you could do the thing I was going to do. I'm, I'm pointing my, my staff at Stitch and I'm going to say Mecha Stitchzilla. Oh, <laughs> Jesus! Let's see how you do. Uh, that's a yellow. Okay. Uh, what what does uh, Stitch turn into, Miles? I'm going to go with a giant cyborg version of Stitch. Yes! Okay. So, like, roughly the same as Godzilla with all kinds of metal parts, and we'll go with also atomic breath. Uh, I'm going to say that's a little bigger than your spell can manage, but Stitch is definitely the size of Giga Bowser now. Liz, it is Yoshi's turn. How is our uh, little Harry Potter wannabe friend doing? I mean, he's not great. Uh, his force field's gone, and his magic wand is gone, and he's looking very helpless Break right his now. glasses next. <laughs> <laughs> Give him a swirly. No, Luna wouldn't say that. Can I, like, give him a wedgie? I don't know. Yeah, I guess Yoshi can give him a wedgie. No, I don't want to do that. There's, like, a flagpole nearby if you want to, like, tear his underpants off and then run Aww. him up. That seems so evil, though. <laughs> Where is the other thing that we've done? I'd rather just beat his face in, yeah. <laughs> I just want to kick him in the face with my sneakers, then. <laughs> All right. Give me a fighting. That's a white. Nope. <laughs> Yoshi is flailing at the helpless nerd who goes running with his arms flailing in the air. All right, Giga Bowser looks over at Mecha Stitchzilla and rears back one gigantic claw and swings. Uh, Stitch, you are getting hit, but you can attempt to dodge or block. I'm still trying to dodge. Oh no, I do not at all. I'm too big. Yeah, you're you're still kind of getting used to your weird giant Mecha self. I'm gonna say that Giga Bowser doesn't do as much damage to you because your size is now much more comparable to his. Mm-hmm. So you take a mere 50 damage from the head. Oh, Jesus. Y'all don't get hit by this thing. It is Comex's turn. He decides to run away, screaming over his shoulder, I'm with you in spirit, King Bowser! (laughs) Comex has left the fight. To sum things up right now, Comex has run away. Giga Bowser is in the middle of the castle courtyard, currently doing battle with a giant mecha stitch, with Peach sort of swinging away at his ankle with a frying pan. Uh, Everyone else is sort of scattered around, either in the air, on the rooftop, or in the courtyard. It is Dante's turn. Dante, you are in the courtyard. What would you like to do? I go into the castle kitchen, get microwavable popcorn, put it in the microwave, (laughs) press a minute 30, get the popcorn, (laughs) and sit on the roof watching the courtyard. Okay, very good. I'm serious, that is my turn. I did not doubt you for one solitary yeah, second, Liz. You know, a minute 30 is like a lot of rounds. Yeah, I was gonna say, I want to see you roll to see if you burn that fucking popcorn. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I'm going to say, uh, you go into the kitchen, someone had already made popcorn, so you just pick that up, and uh, you bring it to the rooftop, and you start having yourself a nice, tasty, salty snack. So this is like a cooking show where the daughter starts making some popcorn, and it's like, fortunately, I have some another bowl of popcorn that's already <laughs> further along. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So we don't have to wait oh for this to finish. God. Luna, it is your turn. Can I use the staff? The wand? Yeah, you can use a comics wand. Oh, man. All right. Does it give me extra something? Yeah, you can use all of the spells that he can, because that's how oh. magic wands work in Mario. What? Oh, yeah. shit. Guys, I got a new toy. Am I? Okay. How angry? Guys who are fighting Bowser, how angry does he look? Pretty angry. Okay, everybody except Dante, do you want me to do something mean to him? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Nico. Um, all right, I guess. Can I lift him up with telekinesis? The telekinesis is excellent. Uh, so that means you can lift up to 800 pounds, and Giga Bowser oh. is significantly more than 800 pounds. Yeah, yeah, he is. And 
Okay. You could throw something at him. That's 800 oh, pounds. Oh, I could. Okay. How much furniture does the castle have? You guys are over that uh, hole in the ceiling that leads down into the guest bedroom. So the biggest thing in there would either be like the armoire or the four poster bed. How about both? Uh, yeah, sure. You can throw both. Roll me some psyche. That is a yellow. And... Well, so this one you only get to do once because okay. there's only one magic wand. All right. So the other Luna is just waving her hand with nothing uh-huh. in it. But that is more than enough as the four poster bed and a very heavy looking armoire suddenly break through the window of the guest room and sail across the courtyard, smacking into Giga Bowser. Stitch, or should I say Mecha Stitch Zilla, it is your turn. Mecha Stitch is going to look down at himself and say, this is weird. <laughs> 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 He's going to search around his giant body, carefully pull out a tiny Marlene. <laughs> <laughs> so your tiny electric guitar. Kind of pull open a little plate on his chest a little bit and open his mouth at Bowser and attempt to play the guitar in such a way that his, his giant metal body amplifies the sound of Marlene. Does he get a cable plug it into like a port on his chest? <laughs> yeah! Yeah, uh, Nico, did you happen to uh, to make it so that uh, Mecha Stitchzilla has an amp plug-in and then like really big speakers somewhere? I mean, duh. Okay, all right, just checking, just <laughs> yeah. checking. Yeah, th- yeah this no, all checks absolutely. out, Stitch. I, yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, Dan, I'm sorry. I just, I thought that was a plug. No, 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 I, I mean, I feel silly even asking, but you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's part of the job. All right, <laughs> uh, roll for some amplified Marlene damage. Oh God, okay, guys, what's... what's sweet-ass song. Should I blast Bowser? <laughs> I mean, Godzilla, right? Oh, by, by, <laughs> by voice or cult? Yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Alright, he's gonna very carefully play it. <laughs> this tiny little stick. <laughs> well, I gotta make this happen. <laughs> oh, I didn't even need it. Now it's a 99. Hot mm-hmm. damn. So Peach, who was standing next to Bowser, smacking him with the frying pan, <laughs> sees these metal plates on this giant mecha stitch slide aside and these gigantic speakers revealed beneath. She goes diving out of the way as Stitch begins to open up with the uh, opening chords of Godzilla. The ground beneath Bowser cracks open in these long lines and the castle wall behind him is reduced to powder. (laughs) Oh no! If you guys recall, Bowser had filled the moat around Mushroom Castle with lava and now that lava begins to fill the cracks in the ground. So now the courtyard itself is like... uh, Fucking metal? Is veined with, with glowing lava. And also, Giga Bowser like got hit straight in the face with a wall of sound. Vivian, it is your turn. Based on Peach's attempted attack, I think Vivian realizes that there's not a lot she can do to damage him. So I have kind of a weird, she's kind of a weird idea. Gonna try to grab Giga Bowser's tail and then veil to pull his tail into the shadow realm with me so that he can't move. So that his butt will be pinned to the ground and other people can maybe like get a bonus to hit him or something. That is a very interesting idea. I'm really into it. Why don't you roll on Veil? Uh, I want to spend some karma. So uh, I got a yellow. So I imagine that in the midst of all this destruction, Vivian suddenly pops up from behind Giga Bowser, grabs his tail, and then pops back down into the Shadow Realm, dragging him down with her. Bowser kind of like ends up on his butt with like his arms and legs sticking up at these awkward angles as he's like struggling to get back on his feet because the dude is kind of back heavy and it's real difficult for him to recover from this position. It is Peach's turn. Um, yeah, I think she's gonna back off at this point. Somebody else can take the final blow. Does anyone need some healing? <laughs> Lace? That's true. Um, she has a, a once per arc ability that she can use to bring someone back after they get KO'd. So I think she's gonna use that. She's gonna use come back on Lace. So seeing the now unconscious raptor on the roof, Peach spreads her arms, a beam of light comes down, shines on Lace, and a tiny star seems to uh, enter her body. Lace blinks and sits up and is fully healed. Nico, you are up. I'm gonna go hang out with Dante. Okay, great. (laughs) Here's the popcorn. Thank you. It is Yoshi's turn. Okay, I want to use Yoshi's foot power again and go straight for one of Bowser's ears to knock off his balance and throw his equilibrium (laughs) off. Doesn't he have ear holes? He he must have have ears. He has an ear equivalent, something that Yoshi can target with this attack, surely. So you can make your fighting check. However, because of the awkward position that Vivian has put Bowser in, your attack is going to be at plus four ranks. Yellow. 
Yoshi knocks Giga Bowser over with a well-placed kick to some vulnerable part of his face. Doesn't do a ton of damage, but Bowser is now completely prone and having a very difficult time getting up. So it is Giga Bowser's turn. Normally, it is not a big deal to stand up from being prone, but in his case, it absolutely is. I'm actually going to see if he can even take an action this turn. He cannot. Giga Bowser is stuck in the ground, being held still by Vivian. Dante, uh, I take it you uh, continue to eat the popcorn, or do you actually want to do something? Hell no! I take my popcorn, I go over to Bowser and to his other ear equivalent and put the popcorn in. <laughs> you're just- There's no ear hole! You're just- It's a tortoise! No, nose! I don't there. care! You're just, you're just right. bullying him for just because now? <laughs> He's beating up my friends! I'm gonna shove popcorn up his nose! Alright, great. Luna, what would you like to do? I don't even have to roll. It's just like Dante does this thing. Okay. No, nope, it's fine. You do that thing. You put popcorn in Giga Bowser's nose. <laughs> fine. I'm casting a cheering charm then on Bowser. Red. And uh, yellow. So Dante walks up to Giga Bowser, <laughs> starts inexplicably shoving popcorn into Giga Bowser's nostrils. Giga Bowser turns in a rage toward Dante and opens his mouth to either chomp on Dante or breathe fire at him or something. Some of the Aaron popcorn kernels go into Giga Bowser's mouth. He chews them thoughtfully, right as Luna's two cheering charms hit him. He thinks about it for a second and then says, I love popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I think we're really getting through to him. <laughs> and then he shrinks back down into normal Bowser yes. and decides to take a nap. What did we Wait, do? What, what just happened? He can't maintain his Giga Bowserness if he's content. It's very Hulk-like. So right, okay. He ran out cool. of fuel. Aww. Now he just wants popcorn and naps. So Bowser is lying on the ground, asleep, face covered in popcorn. Vivian's gonna let go of his tail, I guess, then and pop back out. Did you get him? Did you win? Yeah, we're good. Win is maybe not the word, but it's over. A ragged cry goes up from the other freedom fighters as they begin to drift into the rubble-strewn, lava-filled courtyard of Mushroom Castle, and triumphant chants begin to break out with people cheering for Peach and for Yoshi, <sighs> but also, of course for the Extraordinary League. Peach and her allies waste little time before they begin trying to restore both the castle and the town just outside its gates. There's a little montage that we have of Mushroom People and Yoshis helping to clear rubble and repair buildings and otherwise trying to return this area to its original state before the Koopa occupation. You guys can uh, each have a brief little snippet during this montage showing how your character is participating or not in this cleanup, uh, or if there is, you know, a little scene or something you would like to do in the aftermath of this fight with Bowser, you can do that as well. I'm reading my book. So just sitting and reading the Tome of Eternal Darkness as uh, construction goes on around you. I Did I say it was the Tome of Eternal Darkness? Uh, no, you know what? That's on me. Making my yeah. assumptions again. I'm just sitting here reading this big, black, leather-bound book. I open up a small morale-boosting popcorn stand, and I market it as freedom corn. <laughs> I'm gonna be, um, like, technically the person manning the stand, except I don't- I'm not actually paying attention. Okay. <laughs> Vivian's been tasked with moving some rubble, but it's really heavy, so she's trying to see if she can just hide it in the shadow realm, and hopefully uh. nobody will notice it, and it won't, like, pop back into existence. That's the equivalent <laughs> of, like, sweeping it under the rug, basically. Luna's gonna help with the stained glass window that got broken. Oh, nice. So you reassemble it back into the uh, peach stained glass window? No, I, well, I mean, I have some transfiguration. It's going to be stained glass of peach sort of in this uh, Virgin of Guadalupe sort of pose, <laughs> looking over everything as Stitchzilla fights Bowser and the rest of us like look up in awe. Oh, that's <laughs> tremendous, <laughs> Luna. Nice. Before Stitch's beautiful Mega Stitchzilla form goes away, he's gonna help uh, clear some of the rubble. Maybe put Aww. the unusable pieces in the lava. That'll get rid of it pretty quickly. Sure. He'll help move supplies around. But it is Stitch, so he gets distracted. And sometimes he uh, picks up the carts and plays with them like they're Hot Wheels. Nice. <laughs> so it sounds like uh, Stitch 
Vivian and Luna are spending a lot of their time sort of in or around the courtyard of the castle where a lot of the damage was done. At one point, Peach is nearby helping a team of mushroom people repair the exterior wall when uh, the mushroom person called Toad comes running up to her and says, Your Highness, we finally gotten into Bowser's dungeon. We've we found the plumber. And mm. Peach's hand goes to her mouth as a hopeful look comes into her eyes. And she says, you've found him. Where is he? Toad replies, right here. And gestures to a pair of other mushroom people who guide a third figure from the shadows of one of the castle doorways and into the light. The figure looks painfully haggard and malnourished, and even his thick black mustache droops lifelessly. (laughs) His blue overalls hang off of his thin body, as does his green shirt and his (laughs) green cap with an L sits askew on his head. There's a flurry of conflicting emotions that flashes over Peach's face upon seeing him. The green-clad prisoner looks up at her, a tired sadness in his eyes, as he says, Thank you, princess. But our Mario is in another castle. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, how did we not see that coming? Luigi has been uncovered. What are you guys wanting to do with Bowser? It's Peach's decision. Well, we should probably find out where Mario actually is from Bowser. Okay, so you guys want to interrogate him? I think that's the plan, yeah. Kind of keep him in a dungeon for now. So wait, Peach Peach has a dungeon in her castle? Yeah, I thought she's does. supposed to be this like utopia. Well, uh, I mean, get, she must have some dark secrets. I she, suppose. Didn't, she didn't build Mushroom she, Castle. That castle was passed down to her. Sometimes people talk shit about the utopia, dude, and you got to smack him down. That's right. Uh, like, <laughs> you know. How do you think it stays a utopia? That's right. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, you got to put people's heads into cages with rats and then they're like, yeah, no, this is great. <laughs> <laughs> then everybody agrees that it can't get any better. <laughs> Bowser has been relegated to a cell beneath uh, Mushroom Castle, if uh, any of you would like to interrogate him. I'm afraid to let Nico go, but Nico might be the right person to go? Maybe? Wait, who's good at... Dante, you're pretty motivational speaker Oh, Jesus. <laughs> no, no, I, I can go. How about... What if we all go? Just as a family. Yeah. I mean, if you want, I can probably handle it. I mean, I'm sure you can, Nico, but I think it would be nice if we did this as a family. That's why we're all going together. Not because I don't trust you. You know, I might I might be able to handle it. I have a, a technique. No, not that one. Different one. Oh, yeah. all right. Well, all right. Let's all go down there and then we can all just try and see, you know, what works. So Bowser's being held in a cell. The sort of typical one wall is replaced by vertical metal bars. Bowser in particular has both ankles shackled together and then chained onto a heavy iron ball, <laughs> which is non-sentient, which is weird. <laughs> Okay, guys, wait here and listen, but don't make any sound. I'm going to try something. Vivian's going to go invisible and just like sneak up behind Bowser and just hang out. All right. So you're using your ability, which allows you to encourage people to monologue about their inner thoughts when you are hanging nearby invisibly. Yes. When I'm nearby people invisible, they just for some reason, they just start monologuing and I happen to overhear it. Bowser needs to roll something to resist this, correct? Uh, yeah, it's just a psyche check, it looks like. And then, like, you know, basically, depending on on how well or badly he rolls, he'll, you know, say something that's more or less revealing, so. Well, guess what Bowser's not great at rolling? Is psyche. (laughs) Bowser is mumbling sadly and angrily to himself. Now I'll bet that Robotnik guy is definitely gonna take over my castle, keep making a bunch of robots. He's probably the one that ended up capturing Mario, too. I wonder what that... That Vivian girl is up to, though. (laughs) (laughs) Any other information you wish to uh, get from Bowser? First of all, I didn't come empty handed. I definitely brought some snacks because whatever they're feeding him is probably not delicious. I don't know. What do they eat there? (sighs) Probably mushrooms. I don't know. Okay, I'm not I'm not going to give him the kind of mushroom that makes you get bigger. But just like, I don't know, a mushroom quiche. That's what I brought. Okay. Oh, we know for a fact there's a lot of bananas in this. Sure, there's bananas. There's a lot of fruit on bushes that Yoshis like to eat. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that and a fruit salad. Well, I don't want you to get scurvy in prison, (laughs) which is a thing that you might be able to get, but I don't really know what your kind of people eat. What do you normally eat? You know what? That's not what I came here to talk to you about. (laughs) Bowser is looking at you in like complete and utter bafflement. And he just says, (laughs) why are you so nice to me? I... You just seemed, I saw, I did something I wouldn't normally do, which is I looked into your memories 
and you seemed upset, and I don't know why you would choose to do this thing that would upset you further. You always had this antagonistic relationship with Peach. You were always fighting with her, but now you decided to do this thing that made your life so much worse. It didn't make my life worse. This is all I've ever wanted. All I ever wanted was just to to rule what was rightfully mine, And but I, I didn't want it to be like this. How did you want it to be? I wanted it to be with... From me and from my own strength, not from someone else coming in and giving me what I wanted. Oh, I can understand that. I mean, what are you going to do now? You're not working with Robotnik anymore, I guess. No, he's probably in my castle right now, though. So I guess what I'm going to have to do is break out of here and then go get my castle back. Oh, you're going to break out? Well, yeah, of course. Oh, do you think that's going to be easy? He just looks at you and blinks a couple of times as though he honestly has no idea how to respond to that. Mm -mm. It's just like, (laughs) you might as well have asked him that question in a completely foreign language. Oh, okay. Well, uh, look, what if, I mean, how helpful do you think you'd be in breaking into the other castle? I know that castle better than anyone else. Don't make me read your mind, but I will if I have to. If we brought you to destroy Robotnik, would you hurt us? Because obviously... Dante and Nico will destroy you. He thinks about that for a second and he says, I'm pretty sure I could take you guys in a fight. But... (laughs) Stitch is like, um... (laughs) I think we have canonical proof that that is a lie. (laughs) But no. I mean, I guess if you helped me get my castle back, I wouldn't kill you immediately. I mean, I guess we could talk to Peach because I think you might be the right person to help destroy Robotnik. You're probably more qualified to do that than the rest of us are you going to turn into a giant monster again well i can't because comic is gone so i guess not luna does have the wand so maybe you can turn him into giga bowser oh i guess i could well we'll see look if you're very good i'll turn you into giga bowser for a moment an absurd moment he gets these really big puppy dog eyes as he looks (laughs) at you almost like pleadingly okay you have to be exceptionally good. All right, we'll go talk to Peach about this. You finish that fruit salad before your gums start to do things. (laughs) Okay, Luna. The next scene is taking place in the restored throne room of Mushroom Castle. While not up to its usual opulent standards, the mess and detritus of the Koopas has been cleared away and business is beginning to return to normal. The League has assembled on the red carpeted floor directly in front of the Mushroom Throne, with Mushroom People and Yoshis standing as an eager audience. Princess Peach, now back to her usual regalia, stands on the dais facing the League. Stitch is wearing one of the decorative tapestries that was on the wall (laughs) as, like, uh, one of those fancy British capes. And then is, like, using the rod it was hanging from as a scepter. Oh my god. Peach says... You strangers from another world have given much to us. Your physical strength, your mystical power, your strategic minds, but most of all, you gave to us your courage and your goodness of heart. Our kingdom was in need, and you helped to deliver us from our darkest hour. You have the gratitude of the Mushroom Kingdom, and it pleases me greatly to present to you your requested reward. And with that, she holds forth a perfectly round sphere. Those of you who went out on the missions to Westeros and to Nexus City immediately recognize this as the blue sibling to these other two gems. Nice. Stitch runs up and snatches it. All right. Why do we always wait for Stitch to grab things? (laughs) Somebody else should really do it first next time. Morton isn't here right now. He's ordinarily the take charge kind of fellow. I have a sense of awe. So, Stitch, uh, now that you have the blue gem, your hand instinctively goes down to uh, where you had put the uh, DDC, and you realize it is not there. Uh, oh, no. Uh-oh. Stitch, like, tries to use his tongue to feel the back of his mouth, and like, nope, no <laughs> DDC there. He slowly turns back to the rest of the league, like, um, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've got to be kidding me. So you have a flashback where you remember during the Battle of Mushroom Castle when a swarm of bee-like robots hit you in the air and then flew off. You thought they were just trying to knock you off balance, but now that you think about it, you think they probably were after your dimensional displacement capacitor. Is there also a further flashback of Morden handing Stitch the DDC and being like, you're ready, I trust you with this now. (laughs) There sure is. (laughs) (laughs) 
So I have news. <laughs> Extraordinary League is produced by Dan Mulcairin, with logo design by Claire Mulcairin. Special thanks to Kevin McLeod at Incompetech.com for our theme song, Motherload, and to TabletopAudio.com for our background music and ambient sound effects. You can find us on Twitter at Smash Fic Podcast and search for the Smash Fiction Podcast on Facebook, Tumblr, and YouTube. Subscribe on Apple Podcasts or your podcatcher of choice, and if you leave us a good review, we shall become more powerful than you can possibly imagine. Smash Fiction is made possible thanks to our supporters on Patreon at patreon.com slash smashfictionpodcast. Please consider donating as little as a dollar each month. It helps us keep the show going, and we have great rewards and extra content for those who help us out. If you have any suggestions, feedback, or other contributions, send them to us at smashfictionpodcast at gmail.com and help us continue the fight. I'm kind of glad I didn't have the opportunity to use my next spell, which was going to be transmute popcorn to mustard gas. Oh, oh Jesus. Jesus Christ. You haven't used that one before? I thought I remembered you using it. Guys, we can't do leak this late anymore. It's just, it's just untenable. <laughs> he picks up a dino and he puts him back down. His enemies get dropped straight through the ground. Yeah. Stitchzilla.